your everyday life, you're surrounded by, directly, indirectly, by the outputs of AI. For example, myself, um, I'm not using fully my memory today because I have all this information outside my memory. We have to be careful about this aspect, not just only um, facilitating your everyday life, it's okay, but at the same time, be a human. We had a very uh, successful story in Japanese industry, including automobile and others, by the past. But after 1990, we are not so sure for the success of Japanese way to do businesses, uh, improving technology in-house and so on. So we, we had to really have a new way to promote innovation within company and then uh, making uh, universities or other institutions uh, be a part of innovation system. So new way to foresee, um, of course, economic growth, but investing in new way to do innovation. That, that's for the story. And for that, we had to have some new uh, incentive in some sense. And the government was ready to do something for that and seeking for new way to do uh, not only industrial policy, but combining uh, with innovation components to promote economic growth. That was a story. But on the ground, it's more difficult, to, <laughs> more <laughs> easy to say that a new policy, but to implement, uh, to make more operational action on the ground, you have to convince people. By the past, it was quite easy because you look at what happened in the US, in European countries, new technology trend, and the ideas was how we may catch up this technology or how we can fulfill in between uh, extracting new trends. And basically, uh, identifying key technology was quite easy compared to today. And then preparing five-year roadmap of technology and how to set up these policies, uh, how to engage key actors. Uh, but this time, uh, let's go back to 2015. Uh, we said, okay, we will, do we, we will continue to, to do the same way, uh, business as usual, preparing five-year roadmap and so and so. But when you are looking after what's happening, not only in technology, but in political and social or the environment aspect, everything is moving so quickly and almost impossible to foresee, even within three years, what may happen, what's the priority. So we say, okay, we should have new approach to prepare this five-year plan. It is still plan, but the intention is not providing step-by-step um, -step plan for, to, do, to take actions. But uh, giving some direction, we have to go uh, not only uh, top-down, but engaging uh, everybody. And then uh, trying to design future society based on this plan. That was our new approach. And we call this approach uh, Society 5.0. Our wish is to make this Society 5.0 as a concept. Still, it's at the beginning, kind of a baby uh, from this fifth scientific basic plan. But the, uh, I can describe this concept, quasi concept, as a transition from technology center into human center. So, human is at the center. And also, uh, we will be taking full advantage of advancement in science, technology, and innovation, including AI. We will discuss about that. But identifying key value as a society to be shared by everybody, 
uh, we may say sustainability. Everybody agree. Uh, of course, openness, because we are not closed society. You have to exchange with others in the way that we are advancing with together. And also inclusiveness. I think three concepts, three values are central for Society 5.0. And also saying it's not only uh, scientists of here to advance science, engineer to advance technology, entrepreneur to advance innovation, but you and me and everybody should be on board. It's kind of new approach for that. And for that, uh, we have to combine top-down direction by the government and action from the ground. And we should provide some space for dialogue. That, that's the approach we are proposing. And the, thankfully, um, we had a good echo from business people. Uh, in Japan, we have what we call Keidanden, association of big companies. And uh, uh, responding to our vision, uh, in internally, they have created a new team within Keidanden, working about Society 5.0, and they have published a report. What could be our action? So it's coming uh, on the reality, and then we, we are expecting that within five years, we may say it's a concept and launched by Japan, but probably shared by with us. What is the main difference between the previous way of policy making and Society 5.0? Um, by the past, we had some components saying we have to be careful about <clears throat> technology and society, because technology you don't, it doesn't exist outside of society, within. And also, you have to add new dimension for society. Uh, it was integrated as an ingredient, but not at the center of your plan. Today, uh, in opposite, uh, you know, uh, subject and object is returned, turned. And then say, uh, we, our plan is called science technology basic plans, of course, key component is science technology, but science technology for the society. And of course, we have to really, uh, structure every single component to make sure that we are moving into the right direction for people. So we have to listen to people, including ordinary citizens and so on. So that, that's a new approach we are testing <laughs> on the ground. We will see if it's be okay for everybody or not, but uh, it was necessary to have this approach. And when I discuss with my colleagues, uh, for example, G7 summits, and they feel comfortable with this approach. They are not against this approach because their concern also is not only promoting science technology by sea, but we are uh, using these powers for the society. How can you make sure that innovation policy is in line with society, with, with what people actually want? Um, in my function, uh, usually every day we, I have many meetings, 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 big one, you know, small one and with prime minister and others. Uh, usually on the table, we have experts, uh, representative industry, ABC, uh, representative of academia, uh, and so on, so, but difficult to find ordinary citizen representative. So the difficulty for us is we would like to integrate their view, formulating our policy, but how to do that? That, that, the difficulty. Usually, when we formulate a new policy, we put on the website, uh, please welcome your opinion, it's very important. So we are waiting for ex comments from, and it's open for one month and then take off. But just when it is over, most. Uh, the idea is we really have to take account of this view from the beginning. So our small tentative, 
was very uh, inviting young people. Uh, it was really not general, but researchers and students. Uh, those who were interested in science technology, it's their concern. Uh, and to have a discussion with them. And by the way, uh, to prepare a fifth scientific basic plan in parallel to our political procedure, uh, young researchers took initiative. Uh, let's, let's go on our side, uh, gathering researchers, young researchers, say we will prepare our version of fifth scientific basic plan. Uh, I was invited by them uh, to make speech and exchanges. And it was a very interesting example uh, that at the end, they provide to us their version before that we will finish our version. So we capture some ideas and it's, it was really some kind of collaborative way. It's one part. Um, and also another way is that uh, beside this fifth basic plan, uh, I was chairing a um, committee on artificial intelligence and human society. And it was really uh, new tentative uh, to think for the future uh, of impacts of AI on the society. And the idea was to have around the table not only technology specialists, of course we have some, those who are working in the AI, we need to have them. But at the same time, having economists, philosophers, sociologists, and so on, so many different backgrounds. And then having discussion, and at the first meeting, they say, okay, we need to have, not only us, we are quite diversified, but we need to have ordinary citizens and others so what we try to do is not just waiting to the end of the procedure, but from the beginning, we were in collaboration with Science Museum, located in Tokyo, where they are working quite well, and providing series of workshop and uh, providing some key topics and their specialist for the communication and discussing with visitors and ordinary small kids uh, elderly, uh, foreign and Japanese, a uh, multitude of uh, citizens, and uh, having their view on that. So they made a short report and providing to us how ordinary citizens think about AI and impact. So we need to explore a different way to take care of their view. And as you can Imagine uh, you have those who are pro-tech. Um, it's fabulous to have this technology and changing the lifestyle. And those who are concerned about uh, the future. So it's really um, good to have different opinion because from the government point of view, we have no way to impose something, but also it, the app approach we have today is, of course, pushing ahead, uh, accelerating uh, rates of tech change. At the same time, uh, be careful about uh, the impact. So the approach is not accelerating and really um, break, but having uh, new driving skills, <laughs> and that's important. Anyway, uh, you can stop people thinking about new technology. And it's, it's the nature of a human being uh, to have what's next. And it, there's so many opportunities today with all the existing technology to tentatively advance in different directions. You can stop that. But you can direct them in the way that it's less harmful for the society and it should be beneficial for society, and not only for a small group of people, but could be beneficial for everybody. That, that's the value we have to share together. In your view, how does artificial intelligence benefit society? Um, 
today, um, I, I, have, I, I have some courses uh, with students. And uh, to be a little bit provocative, uh, what is, first question, what is your relation with your AI? And some says it's not my affairs. Some, oh, I have my cell phone. Uh, I want to become AI specialist and so different view. But anyway, uh, in your everyday life, you're surrounded by directly, indirectly by the output of AI. So today's situation. And then uh, what's different with the traditional technological advancement? By the past, you have some tangible cars. You have electric devices that you can touch. You can have your, have your own ownership. But today, uh, everything is <laughs> intangible. But very invasive because what you want to do, uh, for example, you want to go to a restaurant, you want to go to picture, anything. Uh, you are informed by something, advised by something. Uh, you don't know what is, it's not tangible. But many information are uh, coming to you and you feel comfortable with this information. And, you know, it's human nature to be more going into more facilities, um, less burden, and just waiting that something come to you. It's very comfortable. It's very uh, efficient in some sense. You are not losing your time, so looking up something. But at the same time, uh, if you look at the developments of small children, my generation, as I explained to you at the beginning, when I was students for the first time, when I entered the computer room, it's a big, big room. Today, for small kids, baby even, it's very easy to have devices connected to supercomputer. You know, it's, you are not conscious about it. So it's everyday life. Then the question, how will be the impact on their development. Uh, development of their intelligence, development of their self, and development of human being as a social actor. Uh, it's not anymore the same way they are growing up because environment by the past was very real world, 99% interaction with the real world. Today, I don't know how many percentage, uh, but they're spending lots of time in a virtual world. And then you need to introduce really uh, intense, intentionally uh, interaction with real things, uh, with touching, interacting, people fighting. I don't know, but these kind of um, real touch, we have to keep as a necessary ingredient uh, to make them in the, the process of growing up. And also, it's necessary for the development intelligence itself. Because, for example, myself, um, I'm not using fully my memory today because I have all necessary information outside my memory and I don't know if my capacity will be this <laughs> decreasing. Uh, it's okay in my age, but for young kids, they have to develop themselves at the beginning. And then uh, we have to be careful about this aspect, not just only um, facilitating your everyday life. It's okay, but at the same time, be a human. What are some of the dangers of artificial intelligence that are understood or maybe not so well understood? Uh, every single technology is dangerous because you are modifying uh, its artifact. So you're acting on environment, natural or human. Uh, the way you are using is key, critical. 
So how to be smart user of AI? That, that's a question. And for that, you have to be conscious about what is it and what could be implication for you, for your friends, your family, uh, your environment, and recognizing uh, benefits. But at the same time, what could be negative side uh, implications? And knowing that you become more uh, autonomous in the sense that you are dependent, less dependent of AI. That, that, that's, uh, I'm afraid, is that you are not so conscious about um, all the stuff surrounding you, backed by AI uh, capacities. Uh, when you are not recognizing that they exist, uh, you are ignoring, and finally, uh, you'll be, by the end, dependent without having a way to take action yourself. So what is important, it's not a dangerous by sea, but when it's become dangerous, you say, stop. I can take action, uh, not using these tools or uh, having other alternatives, but uh, it's a way that you can protect yourself. It, that is important because no, nothing is dangerous by, by itself. It's the way you are using and the way others are using. Because if, even if you are uh, aware about that, uh, if others surrounding you are not aware, it's also dangerous. So uh, running process is critical and you have to start from the beginning. What should people do to make better use of technology in their life? Um, it's by discussing, <laughs> like we are doing today, um, because you never know what's happened in next year. Uh, for example, all the devices not existing uh, three years ago, it's on the market. It's very quickly uh, becoming uh, normal to have this kind of asset. For example, we are nearby Christmas holidays. And you may think about which present for your kids. And then now there's so many, so many devices. Within, you have some component of AI. And it's really funny to see your dog or something like that, discussing with you with kind of natural language and then responding to your request. And they're capturing what you are saying and they're capturing all the information they're talking about, and then uh, where we go, where they go, this data, and how this data will be used by for the commercial purposes, and so on. So, so many things may happen, but uh, I'm not saying that it's so, everything is bad, everything is good, but uh, buying this stuff, you should be careful about education <laughs> as a parent. And also for kids, they have to be uh, conscious about all oh, these artificial, lifelike things, differentiating clearly with a human being and animals and all the lives, because the value of life is so critical and you have to have understanding all the uh, ecosystem, uh, because human is a part of the story. All these things you have to learn from the beginning, and then uh, an easiest way is to have uh, really real experiences to make sure that you can have both, but not only this side of devices, because it's so easy, and this you don't need to go outside. You have have some virtual experience within, and then just having a, you know, it's fabulous for us. But if you have only experienced through this stuff, you don't feel real nature. And that's missing part. So complementing all this stuff. You have to take this kind of action consciously, because otherwise you are moving in the you know, most complicated society. It's most easier 
it's natural. But at the same time, you have some charms and really um, attractiveness of complexity because it's, it's you. And not to, because some kind uh, is my vague impression is that uh, every everything coming to you, you just sitting in your office and every information is coming in, and you can act yourself by even just by voice now. So, what happened to you? Uh, what is your feeling? And what's the relation with your friends? And you know just sharing time with someone uh, physically and, you know, to touch them. <laughs> this kind of simple thing uh, you should do intentionally. That's, you know, it's new world, probably. But you have to keep some kind of these parts of this up for human being. Do you think the tech industry also has a responsibility to promote more responsible use of their technology? Uh, everything, every single thing could be business opportunity for them. Uh, why not? But you can uh, take action by yourself. Uh, what I'm afraid is that you become more and more passive in the way that you're waiting that someone tell you what you do, you have to do. Uh, I can come back to the question of education for kids and for even for adults. Um, you have to use your mind, yourself, your intelligence, and to have your view on every single aspect of your life. And, and of course, you have to take account of the order's arguments or advice coming from AI, but it's up to you to decide finally. And then for that, you have to formulate yourself, your view. And then it's kind of exercise you have to make. And in particular, not waiting that someone tell you, but you have to go yourself seeking for something, uh, not only just on virtual world, but in real world. The, then you, you will become actors, acting, not just sitting. <laughs> it, it, of course, you need to make your physical effort, but for your mindset, you have to go take action. We seem to be um, connected to the world, at the same time, you are isolated in your side. And that's not so good for the society. So let's take advantage of this connectivity. At the same time, you may have some interaction as a, not individual, but as a group of society. Then you may have some ideas about what could be the future of society. Um, and also, you know, from the U.S., you have so many big company, tech company, uh, GAFAMs, and even Alibaba included now. Uh, they have their business model, they have their view on AI, their view on data sets, and they're exploring as far as possible the way to use this data, not only collecting, but using data. And they are testing. And we need to have the capacity to say, stop, this is the limit. Uh, for that, they have to have a policy of transparency and explaining what they are trying. Uh, the argument will be, it's good for the society. But this will be the point of view of some people, probably. It could be shared by ordinary citizen, but I don't think it would be the case for every single tentative. And I said, I think they are quite good in the way that they are listening to the opinion. But we have to express our view uh, clearly and in accurate way. 
That's why dialogue is critical, even in the world of information gathering digitization. What do you think is on the horizon in the coming years in terms of changes that technologies bring? So internally, uh, we have team working on some specific issues like mobility, like aging society, uh, disaster management and energy issues. So they, they can formulate uh, the vision of in 2020, 2013, uh, the society will be, could be. Uh, it's one way. Um, I think it's, we have, um, I'm, I was working at the OECD, still in connections, and they are trying to have some tentative uh, for describing future scenario. Uh, I think it's a good exercise in the way that not to just describing what could be the future, but the process itself is quite in, important and interesting because you are gathering people, listening to people, what is your view, like you are doing, and foreseeing what could be um, implication for the society. And making people discussing, it's really fast. Step. And instead of really describing uh, by kind of prescription, society should be like that. And even you, you will do this exercise, almost impossible to realize that. So it's not a good way to consume your energy but just showing direction. But we need to check where we are. And then if something uh, unexpected, um, positively, it's okay, but negatively, you have to take care of that. And how to overcome by regulation or by consensus. Uh, even today, uh, legal structure is not adapted, appropriate anymore with all the potential capacity we have today. Uh, typical example, automotive to, uh, vehicle. Uh, car is by definition, you have a driver. So if you don't have driver, it's any more car. <laughs> so really, basically, different uh, legal structure is we have to adapt them to the current situation, but it takes time. And just waiting that its adaptation will be at, by the end, uh, new technologies on the table. So it, it, almost impossible to catch up uh, technological advancement with the regulatory advancement. So we need to be innovative in the way to really find new way to uh, not probably regulate, but uh, give a good framework for that. that. That's, we have to work on that. There's always this fear that technology threatens people's work, in a sense. Um, how can people make sure that they have skills that are useful still in the future? It's really big, future. big issues. It is many hours. <laughs> but um, uh, lots of countries now are discussing seriously about what the future of the work. And because it's social affairs, uh, but not only social affairs, really structural and structural for the, not for the industry sectors, but the society as a whole. Uh, by the past, can we say, say that you have 24 hours a day. Uh, you're splitting your time, work and leisure. So work is something hard. Uh, you don't want to do that less, as less as possible, better. But you have to survive, so you have to work. And this conception work will be changing. Uh, and the more and more you are working because you want to do something. Uh, of course, you have to have minimum uh, to survive. Uh, so you have some universal income story coming in, uh, something that you have to think about. But beyond this getting minimum to survive, you need to take action. And you, you are, as a human being, you want to do something. You want to be uh, useful for the society, useful for family, society, and so on and so and you feel good because you are doing something. So new conception of work should be on the table. And of course, what is good, uh, physically very painful work will be replaced already. 
but uh, routine, uh, repetitive work will be replaced again. And also, you no, know, you should be, as a human being, you have um, limits of concentration. Uh, you, you can be more than one hour to be really on something. So this kind of job will be replaced by AI. So some say uh, optimistically, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can use your time, much more interesting things, but you'll be able to do that and switching from one to another. And it's really, you have to start from the beginning to be able to be more flexible, uh, be able to find yourself what you want to do and not only for your selfish thinking, but uh, associating with others. So that's be really, if you are managing the right way, uh, better design society, probably. Uh, otherwise, you have to, as a government, take care of everybody. And that would be, uh, at least, <laughs> not to my preferences. Uh, for that, um, it's coming back to the discussion we had at the beginning. Uh, you have to be independent in some sense. You have to be yourself to feel what you like to do and also uh, be able to invest in you, not because someone tell you, because your mother uh, guided you in your career, but it's you. And uh, you, have, you will have many potential possibility to choose a different path, but probably you need to have better preparation for each task. And we'll be facilitating, thanks to internet, thanks to MOOCs and other tools that you can equip yourself with new skills and then trying something new. And you'll be discovering that, oh, I'm good in this. So this kind of flexibility and uh, not saying that this, this job is very valuable, this is not so good, so kind of hierarchy that we have today will be out of scope and then it's up to your, your taste or your envy and, uh, and responding to the societal demand. So new relationship will be in place. Uh, in optimal, opti <laughs> optimistic view, but we have to see. And uh, that's uh, against rigid social structure. In this sense, it's very disruptive. And for some, who feel comfortable within existing uh, structure, hierarchy, they'll be losing their power. So they may have some resistance for the transitions, but uh, almost impossible to stop this move. And that's why we have to prepare for the next generation and to have open discussion with what could be the important things in your life. <laughs>